NVIDIA shares pulling back today to AI, um, the AI market darling falling further from that record high that it reached not too long ago. Our next guest, though, isn't worried about the bumpy path that we have seen for NVIDIA over the last uh, several weeks. He's got a buy rating on the stock, the highest price target on the street. We want to bring in Hans Mosesman. He is Rosenblatt Securities, a senior research analyst. It's great to have you here. So when you take a look at what has been certainly a volatile uh, couple of weeks for NVIDIA, some of that sell side pressure on the stock. Why isn't that worrisome to you? Well, I, we're entering new territory for NVIDIA. Um, you know, the valuation uh, really out of uh, thin air almost over the past year, uh, the move has been such that it has, uh, uh, you know, people kind of worried, like, how is that even possible? And it requires you have to have an understanding of what's going on with AI and their leadership position. So it could be a little bumpy, but from a secular perspective, for the next 10 years, this is going to be the, um, the way to play AI. Uh, they're at another level. And I think people have uh, have to just get used to that. And it, they're not a semiconductor company anymore. They're a platform. They're all things AI. And Hans, you know, I'm assuming if you're bullish on NVIDIA too, Hans, you, you must be also then bullish on just the bigger mega trend of AI that, that you must think, you know, yeah, yes, it is this paradigm shift. And yes, Jensen Wong is right when he talks about, you know, how the next industrial revolution has begun, Hans. Yeah, that's right. So there are a couple of moving parts. And so the cloud, which is where most of NVIDIA's business is, is not going to be the home of all things AI. As, as time goes on, more AI gets done, not up there in the cloud, but in, in the mid edge, the far edge. And it opens up the door for more efficient solutions in terms of platform, uh, hardware, and even software. So there are other players that will benefit uh, from that transition, such as AMD, such as ARM, uh, a little company called Lattice that we cover. Uh, so there's other participants, but in terms of the value capture of AI, uh, NVIDIA may lose unit market share, but they may actually gain value because they're, they're, they're monetizing the entire stack. That's the, the entire rack, the entire software that goes around that. So it's a formidable uh, model that I think people have yet to kind of fully grasp. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, has been teasing the upcoming versions of his ad chatbot Grok, which is expected to be a competitor to ChatGPT. He said that he plans to train Grok on 100,000 NVIDIA GPUs, a claim that many people didn't take seriously because Musk is known for breaking promises and missing deadlines. However, it appears that Musk was true to his word this time as he posted on X that the most recent version of XAI chatbot Grok 3 should be something special because of the NVIDIA GPUs in today's video. We'll discuss what this means for fans of NVIDIA and NVIDIA stock, as well as why Musk decided to stick with the chipmaker rather than a less expensive rival. But before we get started, if you want to stay up to date on NVIDIA's most recent developments and the most recent news on the stock market, you can subscribe to our channel Investing Tutorial to receive updates on the biggest shifts and market catalysts. Click the bell icon to ensure you don't miss the most recent market updates. All right, let's get back to today's video said a minute ago there that NVIDIA is no longer just a chip maker, it's all things AI. That has actually captured the attention of regulators around the world. And earlier this week, we got the Reuters report out that actually France is looking uh, to, uh, to uh, all right, NVIDIA is setting uh, potentially uh, facing some antitrust charges there in France. I'm curious to you just how you're assessing that risk from an analyst perspective and what to what extent this could ultimately be a worrisome a headwind here for the stock. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, NVIDIA competitors and NVIDIA observers and countries get worried about uh, a company that is grasping or, or capturing all of this value. So there is a knee-jerk reaction in some cases to stop that. They've already endured the, the U.S. basically with these restrictions on China, 20, 25% of the business is basically gone and they're still basically sold out. So it's something to watch but they are not being predatory in, in the least, even though prices have been moving up. It's not the, the price of the chip or the board of the rack that is driving this business. It's the value created by the total cost of ownership. It's a different metric that we in the semiconductor industry are not used to, right? You can double the price of this product and it provides significant TCO, you know, performance per watt, per cubic foot, per dollar advantages that nobody can meet, right? It's it's not like 
there's another guy that can do it. Maybe AMD captures some share here, but that's it's a little different. But yes, it's something to monitor in France is something that kind of raises eyebrows and so on. But at the moment, I don't think it's going to lead to anything because they are be they're being fair in terms of how they price their products, in my opinion. Hans, as you know, you know Jensen is is building out this platform. As he expands, Hans, you know he, he moves into new areas, new verticals. Are there companies that you think should be worried? Well, so the traditional way of, of doing things in silicon are, are are changing. So that the 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 let's call it the general purpose server market is being you know, really destroyed in terms of value by moving to an accelerated cycle. So, you know, guys like Intel and even AMD, if AMD didn't have a GPU, for example, they'd be in big trouble. Uh, so they are changing the way compute is done. And so the next wave of where a value capture for NVIDIA, if you look at say the cloud, for example, are networking areas, storage areas. And so you, you start to kind of bring in those areas in terms of value and you maximize the interface between networking and storage with the computer, the accelerated compute. So I think that the traditional networking uh, players and storage players probably have uh, to deal with this. There are ways to get around that. For example, Broadcom and Marvell, uh, which are you know big players in networking, they have the ability to do custom chips. And so some of the hyperscalers don't want to use NVIDIA all the time. They want to do their own custom, highly efficient, very expensive, accelerators and so there's another kind of theme that is counter to that but it is interesting how if you look at nvidia's roadmap how they expect to capture not just the, the gpu the compute but the entire rack and everything that goes inside of rack and, and a data center Elon Musk's XAI is a newcomer to the race to provide more sophisticated versions of massive language models, which appears to be a competition among all AI focused businesses to meet the growing demand for AI chatbots. Grok is the name of XAI's chatbot, and the business is now getting ready for Grok 2. But in his most recent tweet, Musk began to tout the upcoming Grok 3 model, saying that it will be significantly larger than its predecessors. It may also come as no surprise to learn that XAI is training its model using 100,000 of NVIDIA's top-tier H100 AI GPUs, which will undoubtedly yield a result that the markets haven't yet seen. There have been rumors that Musk was looking to buy a lot of NVIDIA GPUs for XAI, but he has now confirmed them, which is great news for both XAI and NVIDIA. Specifically, it was rumored that OpenAI's GPT-4 large language model was trained on 40,000 of NVIDIA's A100 AI GPUs, which are less common than H100s and relatively outdated, so you can imagine the capabilities that the Grok 3 AI model will have. Additionally, Musk previously announced that he intends to purchase a large quantity of NVIDIA Blackwell 200i accelerators for XAI which is reportedly valued at $9 billion, which is a huge sum of money given the state of the markets. The fact that Musk is maximizing the use of XAI is justified by the fact that Grok 3, which uses 100,000 H100 units, is expected to cost roughly $3 billion for training alone. It will be interesting to see how XAI plays out in the AI craze, but what does Musk's statement mean for NVIDIA and NVIDIA stock investors? Let's find out. Says the Fed could be a caveat to the market, but still thinks the rally will, will go higher and has just revised his annual price target to 5751. Let's bring in Keith Fitzgerald, a Fitzgerald Group principal. Keith, it's good to have you. So even with sort of hawkish sounding Powell there. Even with, and here's the thing, is the market's going to continue to narrow up. It's going to be companies like NVIDIA and Tesla and Apple and many of the great tech names we talk about all the time that lead the way. Companies like Nike and Walgreens are going to get left behind this earnings season. is going to be very telling. But still, path of least resistance is higher, Kelly. And, and why do you think that is? Why do I think what? That the path is higher or that they're going to get left behind? Well, <laughs> both. <laughs> Well, there's still a lot of money that needs to go to work, and structurally, we are very identical to two prior periods of significant growth in history, you know, where we had lots of innovation, we had labor challenges to the 1950s and the 1990s. And so if we think about this like a beach party, everybody's just rolling onto the sand, they're starting to break out all the great food, people are smiling, frisbees are starting to go around, but there's a long way to go before everybody gets sunburned. So it's a nice, good place to be, it doesn't feel like that, but history's
Elon Musk's sizable order for H100s is fantastic news for NVIDIA because it allays exaggerated worries from analysts and investors about how the company would grow until Blackwell is released. This is because many had anticipated slow growth, but that won't be the case because demand for the H100 is still high. Additionally, NVIDIA will benefit from the fact that XAI will use Blackwell chips and Musk's other company. Tesla will also receive a fair share of the Blackwell GPUs. Musk pursuing NVIDIA's cutting-edge GPUs shouldn't be shocking because they are the most sophisticated on the market, but it should also be noted that the CEO of Tesla is a strong supporter of NVIDIA and its CEO, Jensen Huang. Indeed, Musk responded to a post on X that featured a clip from Huang's interview from March at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, praising the NVIDIA CEO's leadership style. Given that many prominent figures in the tech and investment industries continue to support NVIDIA despite its setbacks and firmly believe in Jensen Huang, we believe that investors should follow suit and seize this opportunity to load up on more NVIDIA shares. These aren't the only reasons, though, and we'll get into some more shortly. But first, we'd like to thank you for watching the entire video. In response to the video, if you like them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support really aids in our growth. So, Keith, let's talk about NVIDIA, which you were early and right on and said there's still more room to go and, and continue to say that. We, I don't know if you saw last hour, we spoke with Demona uh, Semaglu over at MIT, Dorona Semaglu over at MIT, um, who said he thinks the impact of this in terms of the economic impact is actually going to be much smaller than people think. Um, if that's right, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, in measurable terms that it can replace some tasks, but really not, you know, the bulk of what comprises human economic activity. I think that's a very interesting observation. I disagree with it, and very respectfully so. This is a lot like saying that talking movie pictures wouldn't replace silent pictures. AI is not just a technology, it's the greatest technology in recorded human history. And I think that every dollar you're spending on it now is returning five, six, seven to the balance sheet. So we're gonna be looking at nine, 10, $12, $15 a few years from now. So the question is not so much, is it coming or is it inevitable? The question is, what does that look like? So I would respectfully disagree. I'd push back on that pretty significantly. And I think that that's a very interesting, but not. Although some may believe that NVIDIA stock is overpriced, we believe that the company's best-in-class AI processors demonstrate NVIDIA's value. In other words, the products, not the perceptions, define the company, which is why we are extremely confident in NVIDIA stock despite the stock's decline. It's unfortunate, but don't let the doubters alter your perception of NVIDIA's value to shareholders. We're now seeing stories about NVIDIA's potential cure, making it seem as though the company is poisonous and the NVIDIA spell is broken. This just serves to highlight how much some media outlets are attempting to exploit people's fears. Remember that NVIDIA's stock increased steadily from mid-April to mid-June, then it slightly declined. This is normal because institutional investors often take profits following large rallies. NVIDIA also split its stock 10 for 1, which made the company's stock more affordable. Additionally, NVIDIA distributed 150% greater dividends. These developments are encouraging for the company. But more importantly, NVIDIA's data center segment saw strong demand for its AI-compatible products in the first quarter of its fiscal 2025 fiscal year with revenue rising at an astounding 427% year-over-year. One may fairly ask if NVIDIA stock would ever reach its pre-split price of almost $1,200. Although there will be pundits trying to sow doubts in your mind, remember that while we could brainstorm and come up with hypothetical, maybe scenarios all day long, none of them would actually add up to a compelling bearish argument against NVIDIA stock. There's an old saying that goes, don't fight the tape. To that end, we'd like to suggest another principle. Don't fight the facts. Extended investors in NVIDIA might set ambitious objectives and reinvest their dividend distributions along the way. In actuality, NVIDIA is a rapidly expanding dividend-paying business with excellent.